The Kraft Foods Company, makers of parquet margarine, presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. Each week at this time, the Great Gildersleeve is brought to you partially transcribed by the Kraft Foods Company. What do you say when you want to describe the freshness of something? Maybe you say it's fresh as a daisy or fresh as new-mown hay. Well, another expression you could use is fresh as a pound of parquet margarine. Every pound of parquet your grocer sells is really fresh, and that's the reason it always tastes so good. Parquet is made by Kraft, who has been creating quality food for almost 50 years. Their long experience in making America's favorite cheeses and salad dressings plays a very important part in making parquet such a good-tasting, fresh-tasting margarine. Kraft makes parquet of fine farm products, and then it's rushed to grocers by refrigerated truck. Each package is flavor-dated, so stocks can be regularly inspected. That's why Kraft can guarantee that every pound of parquet is at its flavor peak. Tomorrow, when you go shopping, pick up a package of good-tasting, fresh-tasting parquet margarine. In most markets, you can get parquet in handy yellow quarters ready for the table. In any package, for any use, parquet is the only margarine that brings craft quality right to your table. Remember, P-A-R-K-A-Y spells parquet, the margarine made by craft. For a good many years now, the great Gildersleeve has devoted one night a week to the Jolly Boys Club, a quintet originally organized for the purpose of indulging in little barbershop singing and since held together by a strong bond of friendship and old piano wire. Me, 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 George, I'll be murdered tonight. Me, 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 Jolly Boys meeting tonight? Yeah, it's fine recreation, my boy. After a hard day at the office, there's nothing like getting together with your old crony. What's an old crony? It's a fellow like Judge Hooker. I thought you said he was an old ghost. <laughs> well, he's a nice old ghost. Dinner's on! You coming, Bertie? Oh, hello, Auntie. Yeah, hello, Marjorie. Where's Bronco? Oh, he's working late at the office tonight. He says he's going to make his first million before he's 30. You? It's quite a trick, taxes being what they are. Hey, Hello, Bertie. Oh, boy, baked ham. If you want to start passing the plates, I'll go get the macaroni and cheese. Hey, fine, Bertie. I know you answered to to that Jolly Boys meet tonight. You bet. But I don't intend to neglect my dinner. Oh, uh, Unky, Judge Hooker phoned late this afternoon and said he couldn't be at the meeting tonight. Ooh, that's strange. The judge never misses. Well, he said he had a very important engagement and that she was very engaging. She? What do you suppose he meant by that? If it's a she, he's got a date. Judge Hooker? Could be. I think she was with him when he phoned. He was very giggly. No, Marjorie, that doesn't sound like the judge. Hop this. Hey, thank you, Bertie. Hey, I know who, who the judge has a date with tonight. Judge Hooker has a date? You gave me that impression, Bertie. I saw him with a lady today. Oh, you did? Leroy, just because you saw the judge with a woman doesn't mean he has a date tonight. He'd never have a date on Jolly Boys Night. Well, maybe he's given up singing for women. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. My, my, so the judge is stepping out. Uncle, wouldn't it be funny if after all these years the judge would suddenly get married? Wouldn't that be something? <laughs> <laughs> maybe he's eloping tonight. Yo, posh. Uncle, do you think the judge could still carry a lady down a ladder? <laughs> <laughs> now, wait a minute. All of you are jumping at conclusions. Speculating about something is none of your business. The judge phoned and said he wouldn't be at the meeting tonight, and you immediately try to make something out of it. Start rumors flying. The fact that Leroy saw Judge Hooker with a woman today doesn't mean a thing. Ah, she was a very attractive woman. That still doesn't mean a... Uh, what did she look like? <laughs> well, keen what I saw of her. The judge was helping her into, her car, into his car by the elbow. <laughs> I bet he's a polite one. Was she young, Leroy? 
No. A bone on stage. You will act young. It's certainly an attractive age. Had you ever seen her before, Leroy? No, she didn't look like Summerfield. She looked like one of those classy ads in Marge's fashion magazines. Imagine the judge with a high-fashion lady like that. You're sorry, but I can't. Of course, it's none of my affair. Doesn't concern any of us. But I can't imagine a woman like that being interested in Judge Hooker. Well, you never know, Auntie. The judge wouldn't be a bad catch. He has a home, a good income, and a flashy automobile. I'm just dying to know who she is. Auntie, why don't you phone the judge? You why, Marjorie? Maybe you can get some more information. He can tell you, Miss Gilfley. Go ahead, Auntie. Marjorie, I refuse to meddle in Judge Hooker's affairs. And I'm surprised that you want me to. I suggest we not pursue the matter any further. Okay. Yes, sir. But like you say, it's not our business. I'm sorry, Unky. It isn't that we were meddling. It's just that we're all so interested in the judge. Well, I'm interested in the judge, too. But I'm not going to phone him. No, sir. Especially to find out who his mysterious, attractive lady friend is. Okay, let's not talk about it. Of course, I could call him. Since he won't be at the meeting. See if there's any business he wants me to bring up. Sure. It'll be strictly business. Ah! <laughs> well, the judge didn't answer his phone. There was nobody at his house. On my way to the club, I think I'll drive past the Summerfield Grill. They might be having dinner there. Not that I'm meddling, but the family will be curious. Oop, there they are, the table by the window, behind the furnace. Yeah, I'll park in front for a minute. <laughs> yeah, I'll just drop in casually for a cigar and, and let the judge explain. And after all, as president of the Jolly Boys Club, I have a right to know what excuses they have for missing meetings. Hey, nice. The judge has a pretty good excuse. Yeah, right, George, I'll find out what's going on. Pardon me. Pardon me. You waitress, watch that soup. Well, Gilda. Judge, I didn't expect to see you here. I didn't expect to see you either, but now that you're here, I want you to meet my charming companion. Yeah, I'd like to, now that I'm here. Miss Buckley, allow me to present my friend, Mr. Gildersleeve. How do you do, Mr. Gildersleeve? Well, delighted to meet you. Miss Buckley, you say? Yes, as attractive as she is, Mona hasn't seen fit to change it. Up till now. Yeah, I wonder what he means by up till now. Oh, isn't Horace wonderful, Mr. Gildersleeve? He always thinks of just the right thing to say. If I do, it's because you furnish the inspiration, Mona. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you see, Mr. Gildersleeve, he makes me feel so good. <laughs> oh, brother. Oh. Well, why don't you ask Mr. Gildersleeve to join us for dinner, Horace? Well, uh, Gildy, you can't join us, can you? Well, thank you very much for the invitation, Judge. But I've eaten. I'm on my way to the Jolly Boys meeting. Oh, yes. Well, don't let us detain you. I'm afraid I've been a little selfish with Horace since I've been in Summerfield. I've simply monopolized the dear man. Isn't this a gorgeous corsage he gave me? Uh, yes, indeed. From out of town, are you, Miss Buckley? This is my first trip to Summerfield. Prior to this, Horace has always come to see me. Oh? Where did you two meet? Oh, it is one of those storybook meetings. The judge dropped his briefcase and I picked it up. <laughs> it happened in Center City, Gildy. Miss Buckley's home. Uh, you know, Mr. Gildersleeve, from what I've seen in Summerfield, I like it better than Center City. It's been the most divine afternoon. The judge has driven me all over town. He's been showing me his property. Oh. She was delighted with my home, Gildy. I just adore antiques. They make one feel so young. Uh, oh, yes. I'm sure that accounts for the judge's usefulness and birth. Well, I've always contended that a man is as young as he feels, and I'm as sound as a silver dollar. Inflation. <laughs> I was just telling Mona that I walk a mile every morning before breakfast. He's walking into a trap tonight. Uh, judge, can I have a word with you in private? In private? If you'll excuse us, Miss Buckley. Club business, you know. Well, 
Will you pardon me a moment, Mona? You go right ahead, Horace. I'll look at the menu. I'm hungry. I'm going to order the biggest of those expensive steak in the house. What do you want to see me about, Yelly? Judge, do you know what you're doing? What do you mean by that? You well, it's pretty obvious to me that this woman is after your money. Gildy, I resent that. You resent it because you know it's true. Gildy, you don't know the circumstances. You don't I. Why, you're putty in her hands. And as an old friend, I don't like it. As an old friend, I don't like your interference. Judge, believe me, the woman is making a fool of you. I have eyes. I can see. Well, then you shouldn't have any trouble seeing the door. Oop. <laughs> you better run for the exit, too, you old goat, while there's still a way out. I tell you, fellas, they're practically engaged. No. Yeah, I'm sure of it, Floyd. And the only reason a woman like that would go for the judge is to get her hands on his money. And I told him so. Got a little testy, huh, Commish? Yeah, I'll say. <laughs> Peavy, don't you think I did the right thing? Well, I've never found it advisable to tell a judge what to do. <laughs> yeah, just the same, the judge is being taken in. And I think it's a problem for us jolly boys. One of our members is caught in the web. Uh... Let's hear a little more about this nifty spider. Yes, how, how did they meet? She picked up his briefcase. How's that? <laughs> the judge dropped his briefcase and she picked it up. <laughs> Imagine the old judge dropping his briefcase when he sees a good-looking dame. <laughs> Just pretty coy as a judge. Yeah, fellas, we got a croquette in the club. <laughs> it's coquette, Floyd. Oh. And I know who the flirt is. She's very attractive, and the judge is spending his money like water. Steaks, corsages. Well, he, he bought a box of candy last night and said he had to meet a train. I'm sure he didn't give it to the conductor. <laughs> yeah, it all adds up, fellas. Let's face it. If we let her have her way, the first thing we know, she'll have the judge's money and property and cast him aside like an old shoe. You got any suggestions? Well, it's a drastic measure. But if we can get her interested in somebody else, it will prove our point to the judge. Well, I'm loyal to the Jolly Boys, but I'm not that loyal. I'm married. <laughs> yeah, me too. Very married. And Chief Gates is married, too. Yep, that lets him up. Fellows, stop looking at me like that. But, Commish, you're the only eligible member we got. <laughs> Happy hunting, Mr. Gildy, please. <laughs> but, fellows, you wait a minute. What's the matter? Are you scared? No, Floyd. Well, you're the one who made the big talk about saving the judge. Yes, he did. Of course, if you don't care about the judge like you've been talking... Uh... <laughs> Blabbermouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right, all right, I'll do it. I'll call her and see if I can make a date. Yeah, you take her out and buy her a big steak and a corsage. Yeah, and candy. You're not so fast now, fellows. This will cost money. That woman's expensive. Since this is a club project, I think it should be financed by the club. Hmm, well... Yeah. That's fair, don't you think so, Floyd? Sure, we got about eight bucks under the piano bench there for an emergency. <laughs> well, that won't go far. But just to show how sincere I am as president of the club, I'll put in five dollars of my own money. Good for you, Commish. And I'll assess everybody else five dollars. My, man. <laughs> what do you think, Peavy? Well, I... Well, look at it this way, fellows. I'm the one who has to take Miss Buckley out to dinner and maybe dance. I'm the one who's really suffering. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> the Great Gildersleeve will be back in just a moment. Whether you call them pancakes at your house, or griddle cakes, or flapjacks, there's one thing sure. They make a mighty satisfying breakfast. And they taste extra good when you top them with golden king-size pats of parquet margarine. Parquet is the quality margarine made by Kraft. And it tastes so good because it's always fresh. That delicious, distinctive parquet flavor blends wonderfully with the flavor of hot foods like pancakes and waffles and vegetables. Parquet tastes just as good as in every meal spread for muffins and rolls and bread. And use parquet, too, when you bake cakes and cookies. It's a grand flavor shortening. Make tomorrow the day. Tomorrow, pick up a pound or two of good-tasting, fresh-tasting Parquet. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y. 
The margarine made by Kraft and guaranteed by Kraft. You'll love parquet at every meal. Well, let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. It seems that his friend Judge Hooker has gone overboard for a pretty face. And the water commissioner got the idea the judge should be saved from her clutches. Now he's stuck with the rescue. It's <laughs> coming, Bertie. Good morning, Archie. Hi, Uncle. Good morning, Marjorie. Leroy. How was the Jolly Boys meeting last night, Uncle? Well, there were only three of us present, Leroy. Uncle, did you find anything out about Judge Hooker and his girlfriend? Yes, in fact, I met her. She and the judge were having dinner at the Summerfield Grill. My, my, so the judge is really serious. What's the score, Unc? Well, it didn't take me long to size her up. The old judge is making a big mistake, spending all his time on that woman. Does he have another date with her tonight? No, I have. Well, that's... Are you kidding? <laughs> well, I'm going to try to make a date with her. I have to phone her first. Uncle, what are you up to? Marjorie, I just want to prove to the judge that she's a flirt. All I'm trying to do is keep the judge from getting involved. So you're getting involved. I am not. Uncle, are you telling us everything? Just how attractive is she? Well, there's nothing wrong with Miss Buckley's looks, but... No, Marjorie, let's not get the wrong impression. What if she turns you down, Unc? Well, if she does, I'd be happy for the judge. At least it would prove her head isn't turned by every handsome man who calls her for a date. <laughs> Oh, brother. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I'll call her right now before the judge makes any plans with her for tonight. So early, Anki? Yeah, if I know the judge, he's camped in front of the hotel in a pup tent. <laughs> Can I run upstairs and listen on the extension? Certainly not, Leroy. What uh, I go through for my friends. Well, maybe I won't have to take her out after all. She may not answer the phone at this hour of the morning. Good morning, Summerfield Hotel. Good morning. Will you ring Miss Buckley's room, please? Miss Mona Buckley. One moment, please. Maybe she's still asleep. Good morning. Oops, she's awake. <laughs> uh, Miss Buckley? Yes. This is Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve, the judge's friend. I met you last night. Remember? Yes, indeed. How are you this morning, Mr. Gildersleeve? You early bird. Yeah, I'm fine, thank you. Yeah, I hope you won't think me presumptuous, Miss Bunkley. But I wonder if you'd care to have dinner with me this evening. A dinner? That is, if you don't have any plans with the judge. Well, I don't have any. I can't break. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> but I don't think I should. Oh? Well, the answer is no. Yes. Uh, yes, you will, or no, you won't. Uh, yes, I will. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve, Judge Hooker told me all about you, and I feel I've known you for years. Ah, <laughs> my <I'm> bright. <laughs> well, uh, Mona, I guess I'm a little brash too. Let's not say anything about this to the judge. All right, it'll be our little secret. You, that's the idea. Shall we meet in the hotel lobby about six? I'll be ready. Fine. Goodbye. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yes? In case you're wondering what I'm wearing tonight, it'll be a deep purple dress. Yo, know, I'd recognize you anywhere. Yes. Uh, but wasn't that a gorgeous corsage the judge gave me last night? Oh. <laughs> purple dress, you say? Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Oh, well, I guess the Jolly Boys can afford flowers. Floyd, I got the date. Yeah? Nothing to it, huh, Commiss? She jumped at the chance to go out with me. She is a fickle dame. It just proves what I've known all along. She's just toying with the judge. And it's up to us to bring him to his senses. Okay, let's check signals again. When do you want me to bring the judge around so he can see you and Miss Buckley together? Well, I'm meeting her at 6 o'clock. We'll be in the grill by 6.15. 
Yeah, how about 620? Hey, that's moving pretty fast. Yeah, I'm just trying to get it over with quickly, Floyd. I want to save our money. Uh-huh. She's already hit me up for flowers. Yeah? She ain't even started and she's costing you money, huh? <laughs> that's the kind of woman she is. She'd probably take every dime I assessed you fellows last night. Oh, hey, I, I nearly forgot. Here's five bucks the chief sent over by a trustee. Good. I'll need it. That's five from the chief, five from the peeve, five from me, and eight fifty out of the Jolly Boys Thinking Fund. Kamish, you better do a good job or you know who's sunk. You just have the judge there, Floyd, and leave the rest to me. <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve. Yes, thank you, Miss Clutton. Everything was just as I like it. They must have wonderful chefs. I wish we had the Summerfield Grill in Center City, but then if we had it in Center City, you wouldn't have it here, would you? No. Where's Floyd with the judge? He's two hours late. And you know, all my girlfriends are so envious of me. Here they are? Yes, I can eat anything I want to whenever I want it. Starches, proteins, potatoes, steak, lobster. And if you ever take me out again, I want lobster. You will. Anyway, no matter what I eat, I never put on an extra pound. I've weighed the same for years and years, and all the girls say, Mona, how do you keep so slim? You must be from talking so much. <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve, why do you keep looking at your watch? Was I looking at my watch? I bet you're just like me. The minute you eat a big dinner, you can't wait to jump up and go dancing. Now, where would you like to go? Me? Oh, I adore dancing. I asked the clerk at the desk, and he said there was dancing in the palm room here at the hotel. Well, we might try it. Can't stay here much longer. I've already eaten four desserts waiting for the judge. Well, pay the man and let's go. Pay the man. Oh, yes. Waiter, check. Yeah, I have to leave word for Floyd where we'll be. Oh, Jim Crotts are coming as dancing tonight. <laughs> Ooh, what a boat I'm in. <laughs> you're sure you're not getting tired, Miss Buckley? Why, Throcky? <laughs> no, I'm Throcky. Where is that point? Oh, I could dance forever and never, 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 never. Well, let's dance in the other direction. You circle this way 20 times. Well, you're the leader. I'll go where you want to go. You want to go somewhere else? Come on, come on, let's go. You well, I... I heard some college kids talk about the blue goose. Now, where's that? You well, come on, that's a little jumpy. Well, let's jump! <laughs> I can't jump far on three dollars. <laughs> Blue Goose is pretty crowded. I doubt if we get a table. Well, we don't need a table here. Well, we'd save a little that way. <laughs> well, of course. We can get a table someplace else late tonight when we want to eat again. Zeke. I use my head, Throcky. Your little date is wide awake. <laughs> yes, yes. So uh, why don't we just go out on the floor and dance? Yes? Well, shouldn't we wait until the music starts again? Yes, Miss. You right? Over here. Who say it? Floyd. Floyd. Hey, excuse me, Mona. A barber friend of mine. I'll be back in a minute. Well, all right. Now, you hurry down. Floyd, where's the judge? I've been tracking you all over town, Commish. Why don't you light someplace? You don't ask silly questions. Where's the judge? You were supposed to bring him around four hours ago. Well, don't get mad at me. While you've been spending our money on the dame, I've been running my legs off looking for him. Who? Oh? You know where I finally found him about nine o'clock? Where? Home in bed. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And now I'm going home to bed. Floyd, wait. This isn't helping the judge. It's just wrecking me. Rocky, they're going to stop the music. Oh, oh, here we go again. I'll never get home. <laughs> got up. I had a horrible night, Petey. You'll never know what I went through. Did you go through with my five dollars? <laughs> you know, I went through everybody's five dollars. 
In fact, I had to leave my watch at the Blue Goose. My, my. And worst of all, the judge never did show up. Oh, well, Summerfield's a small town. I imagine he'll hear that you were out with Miss Buckley. Yeah, I guess so. I hate to face the judge, Petey. I'm not sure I did the right thing. Oh, John. Well, he probably called her for a date last night, and when he found out she'd gone out, he went home to bed with a broken heart. Well, could be. Uh, pardon me, Mr. Gildersleeve, but would you like to slip out the back way? Ha! Ah. Here comes the judge now. Well, thanks, Petey. But I'll have to face him sooner or later. Horace is one of my best friends. Yeah, I'll confess the truth. Tell him I'm meddled and I'm sorry. Morning, gentlemen. Yeah, hello, Judge. Hello, Horace. Old friend. Gildy, I just talked with Miss Buckley. Well, yeah, I guess you know all about last night, then. Oh, yes. Miss Buckley is such an impulsive woman, she couldn't keep your little secret. <laughs> Judge, no matter what you think of me, I gave you my word. I did it for your own good, and it cost me plenty. Yeah, and me too. Oh? Judge, I even assessed the Jolly Boys five dollars apiece to help finance the evening. Gentlemen, I don't know how to thank you. Gildy, old friend, I had no idea you'd go to such lengths to help me entertain a client of mine. A client? Thanks to you, I'm now in charge of all of our property in Center City. <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve, I want my five dollars back. <laughs> you be waiting until I get my watch. How do I get into these things? <laughs> Gildersleeve will be right back. There's only one margarine at your grocer's that brings craft quality right to your table. It's Parquet, the margarine that tastes so good because it's always fresh. Tomorrow, pick up a pound or two of good-tasting, fresh-tasting Parquet margarine. Ask for P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. You, Uncle Mort? Yeah, it's me. What's the matter, Uncle? You're dragging. Who, me? Yeah, I'm not dragging. I feel fine. Everything work out all right with the judge's lady friend? Oh, yes. She went back to Center City. You saved the old judge from a cruel fate, didn't you, Uncle? Huh? Oh, yes. That meant for me, goodness knows what might have happened to him. And you didn't have any difficulties at all. Me? No. You have to get up pretty early in the morning to catch your old uncle. Now, I'm Foxy. You sure are, Unc. <laughs> you bet. Oh, by the way, Unky, here's a little package a man left for you. The package? The what man? The manager of the Blue Goose Roadhouse. <laughs> what? It's your watch that you left in hot last night. <laughs> oh, my goodness. See you later, Foxy. <laughs> I was ambushed. Good night, folks. Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White and is partially transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Arthur Q. Bryan, Sarah Selby, Earl Ross, and Dick Legrand. Music by Jack Meekin. This is John Heaston saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. Delicious cold cuts for luncheon or supper make a welcome change of pace from the hot meals you've been serving. Easy to fix, too, but here's a tip. Be sure there's delicious craft prepared mustard on the table. Because when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. There are two kinds of craft mustard. Mild craft mustard, so smooth and delicately spiced. And craft mustard with snappy horseradish added to give it extra zip. Keep both kinds on hand for different tastes. Next time, get craft prepared mustard. <laughs> Tonight, be sure to hear the Robert Montgomery News Program, 
on NBC.